Welcome back to what she said. Do you ever wonder why you're confident in some areas of your life, yet in other areas you have so much fear and self-doubt? Canadian Positive Psychology Association founder Louisa Jewell has written a book that answers just those questions, and she joins us now in studio. Welcome to what she said. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. The book is called Wire Your Brain for Confidence, The Science of Conquering Self-Doubt. So I guess the, the bottom line question is, why do we all seem to be plagued with some form of self-doubt these days? Well, the, the research shows that really there's so much change that's going on in the world. And when things change for us, we're constantly questioning, do I measure up now? Am I still good enough with what I have? You know, for example, when Instagram came out, the question for me was, oh, I'm not on Instagram. I don't have an account. I don't have followers. Is there something wrong with me now? And so with this constant change that's going on, it's it's constantly putting into question, are we good enough? And so we're starting to doubt ourselves more and more. You know, it's interesting you say that. I wondered if you would mention social media because there you see the most perfect moments of everybody's life and you wonder why your day doesn't look like that every day. Well, exactly. And the thing is with self-doubt is it's very socially constructed. And what I mean by that is we're always looking outside to say, well, look at her. Do I measure up to her? Is she the example of where I need to be and I'm not measuring up? And so then I start to doubt myself. So there's this constant social comparison that's going on. So it's not a matter of whether we're going to ever eliminate self-doubt. We want to have a little self-doubt because that kind of pushes us to higher levels of performance. It's just this constant feeling of self-doubt about everything. When it's chronic like that, that's when we want to eliminate it. So we want to be able to manage our self-doubt in healthy ways. But there are so many highly talented, educated women who, who still doubt themselves. They call that imposter syndrome, right? They're going to be discovered. Yeah. How can we stop feeling like imposters and start owning that power? Yeah. And you know what? Imposter syndrome is really a problem because it perpetuates self-doubt. You see, the only way we are ever going to feel confident is when we actually get better at things and we actually believe that we are getting better at things because competence breeds confidence. So with imposter syndrome, I'm always giving away my success. I'm never actually believing that I had anything to do with this successful thing that just happened. So in order to overcome imposter phenomena, what I need to do is I need to ask myself after every success, what was my contribution in that success? Yes, maybe Bill helped me over there and maybe Susan helped me over here, but what did I do to contribute to that success? And I have to start believing believing that I move the needle on my abilities in order for me to start feeling, again, more confident and feeling that I'm getting better and better at things. Now, in the book, you say that scientists have actually discovered a formula for how we can wire our brains for a more action-oriented kind of confidence that boosts our courage to act even when we're afraid and have self-doubt. Yes. Is that, is that true, really? Yes, yes, there is a four-step formula that you can actually follow. And once you start to incorporate that into your life, you will see that your behaviors change. I wanted to write about this kind of confidence because to me, confidence without action will get you nowhere. So I wanted to know, why was I really confident in some areas? You know, I've been a speaker for years and yet writing a book, I was just so fearful of that. I wasn't moving into the behaviors to make that happen. Why if I was just generally confident? So I wanted to know, how do I get into action? How do I break down the resistance? And there is four different sources of this kind of action-oriented confidence that I talk about in the book, that once you start to move towards those, you'll start to see your behaviors follow. Okay, so now we have to know yeah. they are very <laughs> <Yes>. quick. <laughs> Don't leave us hanging, counting to yeah, four. So, I mean, so, so the first one is you've got to go out and start doing it. You've got to start practicing it. And a lot of people say, yeah, well, thanks a lot for that advice, because if I had the confidence to go and do it, I'd be doing Doing it. So thanks for that useless piece of information. So what I tell people is then take a baby step. 
So break it down. If it's writing a book, then maybe the first step I do is I start a blog and I start getting comfortable with writing. So break it down into baby steps. Once you start again to build your your competence in writing, you will see your confidence will follow. As you go through all those little baby steps, the next thing you know, you're writing that book. So it's chipping away at that and feeling more confident about it as you do that. So that's one. That's one of the things. The second source of, and we call this self-efficacy. So this is that, that's what we call it in the literature, this kind of action-oriented confidence. The second one is to find role models that inspire you. Not role models that you feel jealous about, but role models that actually inspire you. Because once we say, oh my gosh, look, that person, they're kind of my age, they're my gender. If they're doing it, I can do it too. So find role models that inspire you. The second, the third one is, is to mentally rehearse. So meditate in the morning and mentally rehearse. You're doing this. You're making this happen. We know that there are parts of the brain that overlap between things we've just imagined and things that we're actually recalling. So we can kind of trick our brains into believing hey, I've already done this before when we mentally rehearse. And when we say, I've already done this before, we're more apt to do it again. We're more apt to move into that kind of behavior. And then uh, another source of self-efficacy is social support. Who's going to encourage you? Who is going to be your cheerleader? If you don't have anyone that's encouraging you, find someone, find a mentor, find a coach, find people who are going to say, yes, you can do it. Now, one of the other tools in the book is your concept of peace at six. Do you want to explain that to people? Yeah. So especially for women, we are finding that women want to be excellent in too many domains of their lives. So the research is showing that women want to be excellent in 14 different domains of life. Things like, um, you know, you want to be a good entertainer at home and the, and your house has to be perfect and your career has to be great. You have to be a great mother. And not only do we Sexy have to be... Sexy wife, you have to be yes, everything. Right, you have to be Jenna Jameson in the bedroom. And yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and add on to that, thin. There's this obsession, right, that we have, that we have to be thin. It's just too many domains in life. So what I say is decide on three different areas of your life where you really want to strive for a 10. You want to strive to be really, really good at it. Doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but where you're going to say, I'm going to put my energy into this and then give everything else a six and say, I'm going to be six out of 10. Like for me, six out of 10 on housework is perfectly fine. At level six. Exactly. And, and I had to, when I said six for housework, I had to be peaceful that if people came to my house and it was a mess, that I was okay with that. I was mm-hmm. peace. I wasn't going to do the Lucy Ricardo kind of, you know, cleaning where everything gets shoved in a closet. Cleaning, for the cleaning lady. Right, right, exactly. And my kids would say, "Are kids? Are people coming over?" You know, because they'd, yeah, they'd yeah. see me cleaning up. Right. If I was really going to be peaceful at six, I had to say, "Look." I'm excellent in other areas, and I'm going to feel really good about that. And I'm not going to beat myself up for being a six on areas where I've decided I'm going to be at six. And that might change next year. You know, my priorities might change. But for now, I'm going to decide. And and Pete, women are starting to just breathe a sigh of relief when I talk to them about that. We tool. can't have it all. I think we've, yeah. we've decided that we can't have it all it, yeah. because it is. It, it's too much. It's too much. And it's okay. But not it's only okay. that, but we live in a very judgmental world. We judge others and we think they're judging us and we have to just forget that. Yes. And just, just do the best you can. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So where can people get a copy of Wire Your Brain for Confidence, The Science of Conquering Self-Doubt? So it's available on Amazon, amazon.ca, amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, um, so all of those online venues. And you can go to my website at louisajewel.com mm-hmm. and you can download the first chapter of the book if you want to get a taste of what it's all about. Oh, that's a great idea. That's yeah. a good idea so people can see if it's something and and who who do you think should be reading it well I, i you know i think the book really has a lot of great tools for everyone especially for women you know, especially for women who suffer from self-doubt and who are stopping themselves from playing a bigger game in their lives. What's your number one thing for people that are going through self-doubt? What would you say the one thing that you could do today to change things is? It's got to be self-compassion. 
You got to stop the beating up and just focus on getting better. You know, focus less on the judgmental part of it. Stop judging yourself. Yeah. And, you know, once you do that, I think you've, it's, it's a huge step. Louisa Jewell, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, she said-